So starting in Windows 11, Microsoft decided to axe a lot of the features that most people would consider, you know, useful or helpful in some way in favor of, you know, more rounded corners and fucking smooth animations. So one of the most popular features that they decided to axe, at least in the enterprise environment, is the ability to customize the start menu layout on previous versions of Windows, Windows 10 mainly. What you used to be able to do was you would open PowerShell and you would run this uh, one this one little command that would export the layout of the start menu. And then what you could also do is uh, modify that XML and then you could add taskbar pins. But starting in Windows 11, they decided to uh, axe the ability to modify the start menu layout using that feature. If you have a Windows 10 layout modification file that has your your taskbar pins customized that will still function as normal all you got to do is take that file put in the default user folder and then also import it using powershell and that should apply it to all the profiles on the computer just like it does on windows 10 but they decided to ask the start menu feature because it was too useful and helpful in its place they added the ability to create these uh where is it is it this one no it's this one they, they added the ability to make these JSON files uh, using the same method, the same, same export start layout, but this time you can only make a .json file instead of an XML. And the idea is that they want you to use an MDM to deploy this JSON file to your computers. Now, the problem with an MDM is, not, is that not everybody has them. Their example, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, you know, it costs some money. And a lot of people are, you know, a lot of organizations are managing their computers and their systems as cheap as they possibly can. So for people that don't have an MDM, there really isn't any other way to do this. Before, or I mean previously, you could actually, um, this was their previous article they posted. It was one of the first uh, documentation articles they posted. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. And this was uh, kind of the de facto way to do it for a little bit where you could modify OEM pins. But OEM pins suck because they uh, only allow you to modify, like, these. I believe it's, like, from photos to alarm clock and then, like, movies and TV and tips. Those are the only ones you were allowed to modify. Everything else had to stay there. It was permanent. And it it just didn't really work as well. I didn't. I never liked OEM pins, and I never used them. But I was trying to figure it out today, and I did some digging, and I found this article. Now, this is from Michael, Michael Niehaus. He is, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, he was an, uh, a previous Microsoft employee and he posts a lot of stuff on his uh, blog and things like that. And this is uh, just a standard article about how you can customize the Windows 11 start menu. So he goes into detail, basically he's talking about this, and he's talking about how to create the JSON file and how to import it to your MDM as a policy, things like that. And uh, he shows you this and how that's kind of how it's laid out. And then he shows you that's the end result. You only have Microsoft Edge, and it works fine. But and then, you know, why does this matter if it only works on an MDM? He found something out. And this is the loophole, the tiny little loophole that the Microsoft gods have blessed us with. Um, this MDM policy is actually just a registry ch change that happens on the computer. All the policy does is it applies a registry key that will um, add these pins to the start menu. So in theory, if you have that registry key, you could just import it into your existing systems, put it on your images, have it run through MDT, and you could have the same result. And he was thankfully nice enough to provide that registry key. So here it is. I have it behind me right here. So let's open this. Let's edit this. And you can see this is what we're going to be working with. This is the registry key. Now, it might look a little daunting, but there's really only two things that we need to worry about. It's this line and this line. And if you look, they're actually exact duplicates of each other, so you don't really need to worry that much. Uh, you just need to modify this line and then copy and paste it to this line. So what are we exactly doing? Well, if we go back to this article right here, they talk about the uh, pinned list and the different keys that you can have. So what they're talking about is that you can actually, these are the keys, and this is the kind of format that you want to do in order to get the uh, things pinned. So we are going to uh, actually just use this as a template. So all we got to do is copy this, because the problem that I discovered upon this, reading this article was that he only ever showed you how to do one. He only showed you how to do Microsoft Edge, and he never showed you how to do multiple. 
and I did some research, and I'm not, you know, very well versed in this, but I eventually figured out how to do the formatting. So we use this as a template. Copy this, then we do a comma right here, that's a period, then you do a space, and you hit paste. And then you can put your extra app IDs in. Now, where do you get app IDs? If you don't know, it's very simple. We just open up our good old buddy PowerShell, and we type git dash start app, start apps, and it's going to give you all of your app IDs right here. This is all the app IDs for the program, most of the programs installed on your computer. So all we got to do is copy these over. So one thing, one funny thing I noticed is if you look, Firefox doesn't use a conventional app ID. You got Google Chrome using Chrome. You got Microsoft using Microsoft Edge. You know, you got Office using their scheme, and you know, SkyDrive is. <laughs> and then you got Firefox, just thirty eighty forty six b zero a f. <laughs> they just have to be different, of course. So all you got to do is copy this app ID and go over to here and paste it right here. Now you want to make sure that you keep the slashes right before the quotation marks because registry needs it in order for it to read it properly. So then the format, once again, we can just copy this exactly as it is, put a comma, that's a period, put a space, paste it again, and put in our next app. So let's put Google Chrome. Put that right here, and it paste. Then we do it again, we do a comma, a space, and let's put in a Microsoft Office tool. Let's put in Access. Access doesn't get enough love. Let's put in Access. So paste this right here. And put a comma, put a space, and let's do one more. Now you want to make sure this all stays on one line. I know like Notepad does word wrap, but you just want to make sure it all stays on one line because it, it that's, that's how the registry has to read it. So let's do one more. Um, let us do. I'll do control panel. Control panel is nice to have. So put control panel right in here. And that should be good. Now you want to make sure that you don't put a comma here because that's the final one. And you also want to go through and you kind of just got to, you know, just look at it and make sure it's formatted correctly. So this has a bracket right here, which means it needs to have a bracket at the end. This has a square bracket, so it has to have the square bracket. And then this third bracket is the closing for this bracket. So you want to make sure that that all lines up. And also you need to make sure there's a space after each comma, otherwise it won't work. And you want to make sure you got those slashes, otherwise it's not going to work. So now that we know that this is configured properly, all we got to do is copy this, go down to this line right here, paste it, and that, those two lines now match each other. All we got to do is save it. Close out of this and this and minimize this and then just run it so we can merge it with our existing registry. And then we go ahead and log out and we can log into our, uh, I made this basically any uh, user account that logs in now will have that start menu layout applied. So I just made this account right before this video. It's just default user password one, two, three, four, hit enter. Uh, and then it's going to go through its whole BS of hi and, you know, we're setting shit up for you. I don't know why it does this. Go through all this. And now look at that. If you open the start menu, there's our only our five pins. Those are the only pins that are on this entire start menu. Go to all apps. There's still everything here. We want to pin an app to the start menu. You still can. It doesn't block you or anything like that because it's not group policy. It's registry editor. So then... All of that is set up properly, and then if you use your uh, your export your, your layout modification file from Windows 10, you can get your ta your taskbar pins. And then if you use some other tweaks that I'm going to be posting in other videos, you can also uh, set up the taskbar alignment and get rid of the stupid Microsoft Teams from auto installing. And you can have Windows exactly how you want it, so you can reverse engineer Microsoft's hurdles that they create to my to try and you know ruin the enterprise environment and how it works. Um, so yeah, that is how you set up the pins exactly how you need them.